and more about the nature of science in, in this video lecture. So if we go back and think about the termite activity that we just did and how the termites were following the black line, we found that the hypothesis most support, that was most supported was that termites follow black lines because they are attracted to the smell of some chemical in the big pen. However, this hypothesis has not been proved true. Now, because it's possible that some other hypothesis could be tested and could also be supported. And it's also possible we could do some other experiments to even tease out how that and refine that hypothesis even further. You know, maybe, maybe it's a sense of magnetic field that was created by the iron in the big pen ink instead of the smell, right? So we, we haven't proved that true. We've simply found support for that hypothesis. So it's an, it's an important thing that we understand that there may be many alternative explanations or hypotheses that we haven't yet tested that could explain the observations or the phenomena that we're seeing in nature. So the correct terminology that we should use is that the hypothesis is supported but not proven. So we don't prove things true. Science is not trueifiable. Rather, science is a falsifiable process. And this is why it's important that you have hypotheses that can be tested. If a hypothesis is not able to be tested, it's an untestable hypothesis. And therefore, it is not able to be falsified. And if it's not able to be falsified, then you know, we can't, it can't be addressed in the realm of, of science. Um, a good example of maybe an untestable hypothesis would have been something like, you know, magic was causing the ants to go around and follow the black line, right? There's no way to falsify that hypothesis, so we, we, couldn't, we couldn't use that. So now um, you need to read the article that is, is posted, and then we'll talk about that.